Lewis, 13, 2, and 1 in championship fights. On this unique occasion for boxing, we have not one ring announcer, but two. Let's send it inside now to Jimmy Lennon Jr. and Michael Buffer. It is time for our historic night of boxing and our long-awaited, much-anticipated, featured bout of the evening. This bout coming away is brought to you by Lion Promotions, Main Events and Fight Night Inc. in association with Prize Fight Promotions as presented by the undisputed King of Beers, Budweiser. Tonight here in Memphis, Tennessee, we will turn the page to another chapter in the history book of boxing legends. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event, 12 rounds of boxing for the linear, legitimate, and universally recognized undisputed heavyweight championship of the world. The three judges assigned to ringside scoring this contest on the 10 points must system are from South Africa, Alfred Bukwana, from Thailand, Anik Hongtongkam, and from Belgium, Bob Logis. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action from the United States, Eddie Cotton. All right, fans, here we go with the main Ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, the time for talk is over. The time to fight is here. It's the time we've all been waiting for. Live from the Pyramid in Memphis, it's fight time. <laughs> Introducing to you first the challenger. On my right, he is fighting out of the blue corner entering the ring wearing his traditional solid black trunks and hailing from Catskill, New York. He weighed in at 234 and one half pounds with a record of 49 wins, three losses, two no contests. He has 43 big wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the youngest man ever to win the heavyweight title, currently ranked the number one contender by the WBC. Please welcome tonight's challenger, the explosive two-time heavyweight champion of the world, introducing the one and only Iron Mike Tyson. And hiding out of the red corner, wearing white, trimmed with red letters, and officially weighing 249 and one quarter pounds. He captured Olympic gold in 1988. Now, as a professional, he has 39 victories, including 30 knockouts and three world titles. He has two defeats and a draw, all by way of rematch have been changed to victories, making him one of the few men in boxing history to have virtually defeated every man he has ever faced. Ladies and gentlemen, from London, England, presenting the three-time world champion, the linear, legitimate, and universally recognized, undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, Leonard. Be 
Destiny's hero. Only one will pass from heavyweight greatness to heavyweight legend. So now there's only one thing left to say. Ladies and gentlemen, We've had two announcers. I wonder if we're going to have two bells <laughs> when this fight finally starts. Well, you don't want to have two punches too cautious. <laughs> and that's what can happen when you have dynamite punches. They are both too careful. Tyson may have been slightly dazed by one of those uppercuts. May have, no doubt about it. The man in between Lewis and Tyson, Eddie Cotton, 6'5", 250 pounds. And that's no accident. Cotton handpicked to make sure he can handle the masses inside the ring. It's going to get real ugly if Lewis keeps clinching the way he's doing. Well, what is he supposed to do when the smaller man dives into him? You better fight Tyson. You better fight him. You better fight him good. You start clinching him, you give him all the courage that he needs. But that's what Holyfield did to him. He clinched him and clinched him and frustrated okay. him. It's different because Holyfield is down low. This man is up high. A good short right hand inside by Lewis. Now, Tyson is looking at the referee already. Tyson with a wrap to Lewis's midsection. That's what Castillo Amado specialize in. Go to that body, go hard. Then make a man afraid of what's going to happen on top. Go hard to the body. Emmanuel Stewart, Lewis's trainer, told us when it's cannot fight backing up. That's when Mike Tyson is most dangerous. Tyson still, though, seems to be the aggressor of the two. Lewis downloads with a big right cross. That right seemed to land in the back of Tyson's head as he lowered it. And he's going to allow Tyson to stop moving his head now. But this is real ugly. The referee better caution Lewis about the holding. Tyson right now trying to figure out a way to get in close, close enough to punch the much taller Lewis. This man ain't much on the fight. Just settle down. If you really want to see how bad he looks, you would be surprised. Settle down, get yourself together, start working your jail. You took all of the anger and slowed him down already by wrestling and tying him up. Okay? Just take your time. Don't let him fight the fight that he's trying to make you fight. Take your time, get to work at your jail. Hold on. If you hit him with the right hands and uppercut, you just slow down. Maybe two. If you can get two in, that's fine, okay? But don't let this guy try to tag you out. Relax yourself. Three, man. I'm, I'm telling him, I'm telling him, I'm telling him. You just stay cool. You we, real we cool. hollering at him, okay? Okay, just relax yourself, baby. That was a good round. Double you won jab. the first round, okay? Double jab like we worked on the step up. I told the second jab. You got Every, every time you get one, I love. Start using your face now. He's trying to load over his right hands on that. He's going to try to come on top first and then uppercut, okay? Be fast, baby. Be fast. Tyson is paying some attention to his corner, which is 
something I didn't expect. Let's go. Let's go. Jabs will be very important throughout the fight. Lewis landed, throwing 23, Tyson throwing three. And now Eddie Cotton warns Lewis. And that's going to be hard for him to stop doing because Emmanuel Stewart has given Lewis the permission to keep holding and tying him up. He's not doing it out of desperation. He's doing it out of uh, instruction. Lewis with a big right uppercut. Tyson still trying to figure out a way to get in. His footwork and his speed used to be such that he could easily get inside bigger guys. You know what he's doing? He's just got to wait a couple of rounds. Big guys get tired or quicker than the, the shorter guys. You just got to wait. Just keep your head moving and wait. There's a second body punch by Mike Tyson. Lewis pushing Tyson away also for the second time in this round and delivers another solid uppercut. to me. Remember I told you, you cannot let this man throw too many jabs at you without you coming back or something, right? Okay, look, you using your, you started using your face, but you quit jabbing. You have to be in this man's chest, you understand? Make this a, a very ugly fight now, okay? I want you right in the chamber. He's slowing down real bad. 35. It's 35. Left hand. Just Keep your hands Work up. Work your jab. The jab is pumping now. The jab is pumping. That's what you're waiting for. Break this. Keep your hands up, baby. Keep Fighting right the masterpiece at real. You're on your way. No peace. Here you go. Here you're go. on your way, baby. George, Lennox Lewis has been holding his hands Seconds out. very low. Is he inviting a disaster? Well, Tyson is real low. You got to put your hands down where your man is. is and he's not doing it. It's just that if you stay up too high, you can't get that shot in. That's the danger of fighting the taller guy. But he's doing an excellent job of out jabbing him now and being cautious. Tyson is desperate. Total, punch, total punches in round two, according to copy by punch that. Lewis 22 of 40 for 55 percent. Tyson 7 of 35 for 20 percent. Going into this fight, everybody punch thought punch that punch Mike Tyson had the stronger jaw. He has certainly shown a strong jaw in this fight because he has taken some solid shots so far. He's allowing Lennox Lewis to just move around the ring and do whatever he wants. Tyson's got to start throwing his jab to Lennox Lewis's chest and stop trying to hit his head. 
was a good body shot by Mike Tyson. He can get that right hand down there low and make it sound. He's coming on top with it sooner or later. Ronnie Shields told Tyson to make it an ugly fight. Is that because he thinks that Lewis has had, had his way from a, from a distance? Yeah, he wanted him to get closer. Don't make it look so pretty standing out there bobbing the weed. Get close. Make it raggedy. Get up, get up, get up. When we met with Shields, he told us he showed Tyson a lot of tapes of himself back in the 80s. There was a lot of head movement. He was all in balance, and he used his jab a lot more. Now you see Lewis is putting his head on, hanging down on the boy's head. This could cause some problem with the referee, and I'm telling you. Excellent jab by Lewis, and a hold. This starts working on the back when a guy keeps leaning on you. Whoa! Music by Tyson. Tyson comes up with there's a the left hook, and, there's a, and, cut. and there's a cut on the right eye of Tyson, it appears. And they butted head there for a second. Lewis got hurt that time also. Tyson blinking with the blood in his eye. Lewis calmly looking at his corner and saying, I've got it under control. The referee better get in there. You can't instruct him. You got to just push your way right through. Here's Lennox Lewis's jabs as he has his way from outside, and that first jab there may have caused the cut. Lewis averaging 25 jabs per round. When he throws that number, he's very dangerous. Stop him here. Let's go. Stop him here. Stop him here. Come on, let's go. Let's bring in Harold Letterman to see how he has the fight scored through three. Okay, Fred, 29 to 28, two rounds to one, Lennox Lewis. Fred, I just looked over at Eddie Cotton, and he signaled to me that the cut was caused by a punch, not a headbutt. So if this fight gets stopped because of that cut, Lennox wins on a TKO. In the first round, I thought Mike Tyson did a nice job getting inside, but in rounds two and three, just like you saw right there, Lennox stood on the outside, used that jab, and came up with some nice, solid right up. Cuts. At this point in the fight, the bad boy of boxing is getting spanked by Lennox Lewis, but he is always dangerous. Lewis following the Holyfield blueprint, pushing Tyson back, leaning on Tyson, and right now, firing that right cross at will. Tyson gets close, Lennox Lewis changes and stops everything, folds his now, the, the up. now there's blood apparently coming from Tyson's nose. The difference tonight is too much holding for Tyson. This guy's done too much holding. Lennox Lewis has been holding too much. George, he's also been punching the crap out of him. Tyson doesn't even know where he is about now. Better get desperate. Lennox Lewis told us that no matter what Ronnie Shields 
spent eight weeks teaching Mike Tyson in Maui during his training camp. That as soon as he got hit, he would revert to his natural instincts. And we see less bobbing and weaving and less jabbing from Tyson and Lewis measuring up. You know, Tyson is picking up the energy from this crowd. They're pulling for him. And sometimes when you're beaten, that's enough to bring you back in the picture. You know, there is an arrogance about Lennox Lewis that allows him to drop his hand sometimes. And no matter how hurt and slow Tyson is, he is a dangerous puncher. Lewis leads on Tyson, connects with a right hand. Tyson goes down. Back. Why wasn't that a knockdown, George? Looked like a knockdown to me. Looked like a clear knockdown. And Eddie Cotton now taking the point away from Lennox Lewis. Get us like this, and you still doing this shit. Don't turn the bacon. Get this motherfucker out of here, man. You can fuck around and get caught with some crazy shit. Step it up, the man is finished. Put them shits together, baby. You, just, together. you ain't never took it to himself. Get your hands. You cannot just run in. The right hand is down. When he jabbed, throw the right hand and the hook behind it. Okay? Just give me a deep breath, champ. Fine. Okay? You can give me another round like that. Stay alert, champ. There's a right hand. Oh, but he leans on him too much. That's what and he is. leaned on him. But that's not a foul, George, yeah, is it? Leaning. You got look at look. He's but why is that a foul? Back. But he's on his back. He's, he's leaning on his back. He hit him with a good right hand. But what's all the leaning? And that's what the referee did a good job. Okay. So far, Lennox Lewis seems to be fighting Tyson and the referee, in my view. Lewis throwing 39 punches, connecting on 27 for 69 percent. In the fourth round, Tyson five of 27. Tyson is just hoping for one good shot. One good shot. Emmanuel Stewart told Lennox, keep your hands up. Here's the guy who's not trying to jab anymore. He's not trying to win points. He's just looking for one shot. And Lewis, that long jab stopped anything. Eddie Cotton with his hands on both fighters' chests as he pushes them away. Tyson just can't find the distance. Now he goes leaning on his head again. If he goes down by a shot, the referee is still going to get him. But he's low. Tyson's lowering his head. Tyson looks worn out. He is. And oh, tired. He is. Once again, Eddie Cotton is what. That's what the champion is doing to deserve these kinds of calls from Eddie Cotton. A lot of people were concerned about some political calls from the referee. And right now, in my judgment, we're seeing some of it. Tyson bleeding now from both eyes. Get up, get up, get up. Lennox Lewis should have never been playing around. He should have had him and jabbing him and pecking him. He should go on and lower the hammer on him and stop playing around with the jab. You got a man hurt, he's waiting to go, finish him out because you're just going to get yourself in trouble waiting around for a good, a better shot. Tyson is out of the fight. You don't want to let him back in the fight. Come on, champ, stay alert! Stay alert! He blocked that left, that uppercut. Lennox Lewis is playing around too much. Put the right hand on the man. Hands up, champ! Hands up! Booyaka! Booyaka! When you play around a lot, that's when you get hurt. He's winning his fights hand down. Just won't throw that power shot. Lewis going almost exclusively to the jab here in this fifth round, looking for opportunities to set up his right. Now Tyson jabs right back. 
A big round for Lewis. You got a dead man in front of you, and you still do this. Just let that shit go. This fight is over with. You gonna fuck around and let him catch you with some shit if you don't watch. This man is dead out there, but he wants to quit. And you out here playing. Hello. Give me all. Give me all you got. One round. Just give me. Just let me go hands. I just want your hands moving this round. Can you stay close to this man and get your hands moving this round for me? Mike, you go out. You're fine. No, I need your hands moving. You get this. You got too much distance. You let this guy jab the hell out of you. You got to move your hands. Now we got to win this. You want to man to say that? Let this shit go. Right hand over top, right hand up a cut. Stay alert, man. Any longer this fight going, this man is dangerous. You better get him out of here. Exactly. Goddamn right. Let us be dickers. Here's the right hand that opened the eye of tight the, the left no. eye of Tyson. Emmanuel Stewart imploring his fighter to take care of business, echoing the sentiments of George Foreman. Now, Tyson should take a round off now. Let this guy move into him a little bit. You don't need to chase a puncher around all night like that. Lewis again landing at will. In the fifth round, 31 of 50 for 62%. Tyson throwing just 17 shots, landing six according to CompuBox. That right hand hurt Tyson that time. Tyson is hurt. Better do something. Lewis, another strong overhand right. Okay, stop pushing, stop pushing. Get out, get out, get out. Lewis is doing, he's comfy. He's not dropping his head at all. Keeping his head up high, so Tyson, no matter how hard he throws, he can't reach up there. That's right. That's what you don't want to do is start bending low so that that guy can hit you with those right hands. Tyson looks very tired. You better believe he's tired and he's hurt, but he's a puncher. Just 19 rounds of boxing for Mike Tyson in his six previous fights over the last five years. The lack of stamina may be showing up. Good punch that shook Lewis. But it's a punch that should never have happened. If he listens to his corner and gets this fight over, he doesn't get punched at all. Lennox Lewis shouldn't be, be getting punched at all. I thought that was might have been Tyson's best shot so far. But Lewis took it. Oh, and he brought something back, too. Swelling now developing under the left eye of Lennox Lewis. Now you slice, Tyson slows down. Don't charge him, just slow down. Keep your head moving. Get your win for the second half of this fight. Then you can do better. It's very hot in this arena, very hot. And the big guys will start to get tired anyway. coming up. Seven, eight. There's no way to where this man should be in here this long. And the longer he's in here, the dangerous it is. You keep working the jab, but you got to add to it. You, you, every time you get your head hesitate, you start to throw the shot, then you hesitate. Let the stop go. The man ain't that dangerous. Finish the shot going. And come back with your right hand. You understand? Let your hands go. That's all we're telling you to do right now. Everybody can't talk in the corner. You can do it. One at a fucking time. You can do it. Listen. Mike, Mike, don't worry about it. Be fast. You understand me? Fast. Lewis has been throwing right hands, and Mike Tyson has been eating them. Guy with a shorter neck, a longer neck would have been on the canvas now. That's short. Well, he's, of Mike built, Tyson. he's built to absorb.
absorb punishment. There's no doubt about that. With that 19-inch neck, 230 pounds, and a 5'11 frame, Tyson showing he definitely has a strong chin. Remember, Tyson has not been able to land one straight right hand yet. It's still there waiting. Still there waiting. Let's bring in Harold Letterman to see how he has to fight this whole day, Fred. All I gave was to, to Mike Tyson was round one. I mean, four, one, one even, 58, 55, Lennox Lewis. Eddie Cotton just warned Lennox Lewis for using an elbow but or a forearm. But in any case, Lennox Lewis just jammed him to death. Uh, a word about that round four. The judges can't call it 10-8 because Cotton said no knockdown, so it becomes 10-9. Since he took away a point from Lennox, it becomes 9-9, which is why I have, you know, one round even in this fight. So 58-55, Lewis. All you have to know is that so far, it's all Lewis. Now, Fran, you're getting a little experience on how they work in the big time. <laughs> it's jab, jab, and the referee moves in. Now, it doesn't seem like there's anything on Tyson's left hand anymore. The referee, no matter how many times he pushed him away, he just doesn't have the power now. Lewis, clearly the aggressor inside the ring. Using his 250-pound body to exert force on Tyson. Get out, get out. Come on, get out. Nobody would have given Tyson this much credit to just stay in there, no matter if the fight is not going his way. He stayed in there, so that's a lot more than we expected from Tyson. Come on. He's staying in there. He's bleeding. He's bringing the fight to Lewis. Hasn't backed away at all. He can't take too many more of those right hands. Lewis keeps that up. That fight is gone. Lewis sizing up Tyson. This is by far the worst beating Mike Tyson has ever taken. It's batting practice for Lennox Lewis now. One fastball after another. He hits him and then still leans on him. I don't know why. I wonder what all those people who think of Tyson as the Tyson of 10 and 12 years ago are thinking now as they watch him absorb this punishment almost without any return. They tune in for a fight and they're Listen getting one. Here. This no, guy's not quitting. He's not Listen doing anything. No. No, you understand? Listen to me. You're fighting for the heavyweight championship of war again. You understand? Not many people can do that. You understand? Now look. I'm not going to sit out there and just let you do this. You understand? You have to throw your punches. You understand? For God's sake, you have two hands. You understand? Just let your hands go. Yes, you can. No, let your hands go. I want your hands to move. You took this guy's best shot. This guy got nothing for you. The guy took his best shot. This guy's getting tired. It's time for you to go to work, brother. Come on, man. Go to work. You say it hard. George, you call it batting practice. That's what it is. And this is the time maybe your corner should come in and rescue your fighter. It's not going to get any better for him. I have an old warrior that's taking a beating like that. And he doesn't show me anything this round. I'm going to throw the towel in myself. I'm going to keep him on the stool. Batting practice numbers that Barry Bonds will be impressed with. 31 of 46 for Lennox Lewis in around 7, 67% Tyson. Landing just four punches, throwing only 17. Tyson told his corner he'd had enough. I believe, George, you're right. He might have been looking to end the fight on his stool. He, he seems virtually useless for now, just taking punishment, maybe looking and hoping to bait Lewis into one punch. Yeah, I would give him the alternative. Look, Tyson, you put up this round or I'm going to stop the fight. I'm not just going to let your brains get beaten out doing nothing. Mike Tyson's stock is falling faster than Enron. Oh, big good right hand by Mike Tyson. If you don't finish your guy off, that's what you can expect. 
you're not doing anything to him, so he'll do something to you. There's another good right hand. And I mean, he's aiming to come back on that right hand on top. Tyson knows he needs a knockout to win. He's never had a knockout past the seventh round. Lewis, Lewis, triple Mike Tyson with a big uppercut, and Eddie Cotton separates the fighter. Five, He's called it a six, knockdown, seven, thinking eight, that Tyson's right, knee go, touched the canvas. Right, I, I'm not sure I saw that. I don't think I did either, Larry. Lewis unloaded. Lewis trying to finish off Mike Tyson with one minute left in the eighth round. Mike Tyson highly motivated to come into this fight, hoping that this fight would redeem his, not only his career, but his whole life. Oh, he's doing a good job. He's got heart. Now, he's you can't take that from him. Big right hand from Lewis, and Tyson goes down for the third time in his career. Lennox Lewis cements his legacy as one of the best heavyweight champions of this era. Nobody should be able, there's no one in the world can take that from Lennox Lewis now. He is no doubt the best heavyweight of all time. What he's done clearly puts him on top of the heap. He fought a virtually perfect fight, George. There's no doubt about he it. He did everything. He controlled right. it from the beginning. He was patient. He never let Tyson get off. Tyson looked old and slow. And, and you know, George, when you look back at history, at fighters like Tyson from Dempsey to Marciano to Fraser, all of those fighters retired at the age of 32, and they were near the end of the rope at the age of 30. This type of fighter has to put so much effort into fighting the way he does that it's hard to sustain it. Where the boxer punchers like Joe Lewis and Muhammad Ali. Even Lennox Lewis. And Lennox Lewis and Larry Holmes all were able to fight closer to their mid-30s. It doesn't require that kind of maniacal conditioning to fight that fight. And we just saw a masterpiece of a boxer puncher in Lennox Lewis tonight. All I can say is, that's right. Larry, here's the first knockdown. The knees clearly don't touch the ground. Yeah. Seems to me Eddie Cotton did his best to make this a more even fight than it was. But Lennox Lewis made it an uneven fight. And when you got the power and the reach, it's hard Here's a knockout right on the chin. But that was just the coup de grace. It had been preceded by a tremendous amount of punishment. George, you talked about power. How's this? 15 of 19 power shots for Lennox Lewis, 79% in the eighth and final round. I'm telling you, this guy, he's a smooth operator and powerful operator. What can you say but one, two, three, and all that? Lennox Lewis wanted this fight to prove that he was the best heavyweight of the 90s. This, in effect, was the, was the last big fight of the 20th century. Let's send it into the ring now for the official particulars. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight here in Memphis, Tennessee, the legacy of a three-time heavyweight champion has been embraced as the referee reaches the count of 10. At two minutes, 25 seconds of round number eight, the winner by knockout victory and still the undisputed Heavyweight champion of the world, the pride of Great Britain, Lennox Lewis. So
So the boxing match itself was anticlimactic, an execution rather than an explosion. And by Monday, water cooler talk would center not so much on the details of Lewis's demolition of an outclassed opponent as on the bizarre post-fight interview conducted by both fighters in the ring with Jim Gray. Mike, have you changed your opinion now of Lennox Lewis? Well, no. Um, believe it or not, I've known Lennox for like 15, 16 years. We've always been friends, but in, comp but in competition, we, in competition, in competition, the best man has to win. We have to do everything we can. I'm happy for him to give me a fight. The payday was wonderful. I really appreciate it. And if you could be kind enough, I'd love to do it again. I think I could beat you if we try one more time. Mike, what gives you any indication that you could beat him after this performance? And was it a lack of quality opponents going into this uh, well, I, that hurt you? I explained before I needed two more fights or three more fights to fight him. But um, I believe if I would have took that route, the fight probably would have never happened. He went in the weight for me. And again, he was just splendid, a masterful boxer. I just take my hand off to you and just please, if you can just do, give me one more chance, I'd be greatly appreciative. Are you interested in that at all based on the way you, you yeah, controlled this fight? You know, I just wanted to complete my legacy. You know, everybody was saying that, you know, this fight is going to uh, count on my legacy. So I just wanted to prove to the people that, you know, I'm the best fighter in the world, on the planet. No guy tests this month. You prove that right now. You were quite annoyed. You had some very derogatory things to say about Mike coming into this fight. You said you had to win this fight to clean up boxing. Do you feel you've accomplished that? Well, I just showed, I showed boxing, you know, who's the best in the world. I went out there and showed him I'm a pugilist specialist. I can adapt to any style. And, you know, he showed me one style that a lot of people didn't think I was going to be able to deal with. But I was able to deal with it. Uh, a lot of people thought he was going to get away from my job, but nobody gets away from my job. Mike, you behave tonight. Everybody. His biggest fans, brother. And he sort say that again. I was telling Mike, I'm still one of his biggest fans. He's given me so many thrills, man. You know, go back to Roderick Moore, you remember? Yeah, friend Roger. Yeah, I know it was a long time back. Mike, and you've given all of us a lot of excitement. Most thank you. Most heavyweight in the last 50 years. Thank you very much. I just, yeah. it was just beautiful. I'm just so happy you gave me a chance. Nobody wanted to give me a chance. Don King didn't want to give me a chance. I'm just happy someone gave me a chance. I don't know what it is. You still can punch. Thank you very much. The champ and Mike, how sorry are you guys that this fight did not occur many years ago when you were at your best and probably you weren't quite as old either? Well, you know, the funny thing about that is, you know, heavyweights, heavyweights mature at different different times. I would say Mike Tyson matured at 19. He was, nothing was standing in his way at that time. He ruled, he ruled the planet at that time. But I'm like fine wine. I come along later on and, you know, I learned my, my art and w I went along and just took my time. And I came along and just ruled, I'm, I'm ruling now. Mike, are you sorry this fight didn't take place years ago? It wasn't meant to be. I've known Lennox ever since he was 16, 15 years old. I have mad respect. Everything I said was in um, proposition for promoting the fight. He knows I love him and his mother, and I know if he thinks I don't have respect and don't love him, he's crazy. So you're saying a lot of the behavior, Mike, is just to sell tickets, and, and that doesn't represent well, your true feelings? Well, he knows who I am, and, and he knows I'm not disrespectful. I, I respect this man as a brother. He knew me ever since his friend Bernie and Cuss were together, and he not I have the much respect for him. Like I said before, he's a magnificent, a prolific fighter, and he should continue fighting. I would just love for him to give me another shot. How important was it for you tonight, Mike, to come out here and be a sportsman and behave in the ring? Oh, no, it was very but I, I would tell you, I love and respect him too much to do anything disrespectful to him. And he knows that. And for him to think that is absolutely crazy.